we move into this lecture, I think some important considerations for intercultural development need to be discussed. First, we talked a little bit about this in the last lecture for uh, going global was in the globalization and media about economic threat. And I think this is something that's really important for local cultures, uh, especially and governments, you know, how a company or even an institution will affect uh, the economy in local areas. And so some of these things really need to be thought through, uh, worked with uh, other cultures and ha have a dialogue and a give and take and be able to um, be up front and to be able to discuss some of the different approaches you might be able to to work with. And with that, you know, in the different approaches, even how employees are managed uh, with the locals, you know, how are they going to be treated? How are they going to be paid? What is their work schedule? You know, what things do you need to consider uh, for the work day? How many days a week? How many hours in a day? Uh, these vary according to cultures. Uh, some cultures, uh, like in the Middle East and Central and South America, have a longer uh, lunch hour period. Um, so those things need to be considered as well uh, if you're going to set up a school or work in an institution down there or, or for a company, if you're going to be doing some training for a company. Obviously, language barriers are something that definitely needs to be considered for intercultural development as you develop you know, that way, you know, if you're going to a, a country where they speak a different language than your own. Um, and then also um, not having a strategy to effectively deal with some intercultural conflicts. And we'll talk a little bit about those um, in this uh, session. Here on this slide, I placed a couple of... Um, columns here. One is a productive and one's a destructive way to manage intercultural conflict, as we talked about in the last slide. Um, and you, as you read through there, you see, you know, if if things aren't um, spelled out up front, how are we going to deal with conflict? Are we going to wait until everything builds up and then explode? Or are we going to deal with things, you know, incrementally, a little bit at a time, and deal with them as they come up, rather than wait till a huge ex uh, explosion comes out. Now, one thing that you want to take into consideration as well is local culture. Like in the in the in Asian cultures, for example, singling out one person can be very detrimental, very shameful. Um, and so, a lot of times, you'll see uh, those cultures address the community of workers. So it'd be like a department or um, a group, a cohort of, of people, even students, where you would not want to single out one lest the other be shamed and not come back to work or come back to class. Um, you know, you want to be cooperative in your uh, problem solving and a win-win solution for everyone So, and how we deal with that. So be careful, uh, really understand the local culture and how to manage intercultural conflict, whether that's through orientation, reading, uh, understanding, talking with others in the field. Uh, this could be, um, in, a, in many ways, this could be your demise and how you um, handle intercultural conflict, whether you're going to be successful uh, working in a different culture or not. And here's another diagram uh, to just kind of illustrate a positive way to manage intercultural conflict versus the destructive, where as you see on the destructive, everything's on the outside, right? It's kind of uh, alienated, independent of, of working with trust and perceived similarities and flexibilities to, through funneling that to open communication and allowing things to be open and discussed so that we could have a, a cooperative spirit rather than a competitive spirit. And in in many cultures, a competitive spirit can be very destructive, uh, whereas things are more based for the community, and the community succeeds, we all succeed. One person succeeds in in some areas uh, outside of the West, in America in particular, that's a, a high ideal, but in other cultures, that's very uh, frowned upon and looked upon as, you know, somebody who's trying to get all the attention and and it's trying to be, uh, you know, more important than the rest of us. And so that kind of uh, mentality and, and, and spirit needs to be really tamed and understood how you should react and act with others in an intercultural environment to um, manage and deal with intercultural conflict rather than trying to be the one with all the answers and the right, have the right ideas, 
<laughs> in your own mind, um, you know, be more of a team player, cooperating, building that, that trust and being able to flex when you can and um, see things from a different viewpoint. I think the basis of effective intercultural development is really something that needs to, to be thought through as you plan and, and work through strategy of how you may uh, one day be involved in this area where you're going to have, you know, the opportunity to be in another culture and to work. And, and how would you want to be, you know, effective in that and in, in developing yourself to work interculturally? is really an understanding of the manner in which people develop their racial and or their ethnic identity, okay? So once again, it's a, it's a really, it's a good opportunity to have an understanding, okay? An understanding of the manner in which people develop their racial and or ethnic identity. And the book talks a little bit about that as well. Um, in particular, intercultural development is, you know, understanding how, people from another culture develop their ability to understand and interact more effectively with people different from themselves. So, you know, that your your host culture where you're going into, they have a certain way they work with outsiders. You're going to have to adapt and to be, be able to assimilate into their culture in a way that you can identify and work within that structure so that you can, can best communicate and, and be effective in your work. So really, once again, it's understanding of the manner in which people develop their racial and or ethnic identity. How is it? Is it through group? Is it through, um, you know, individual? Is it by, you know, gender? Is it by, age, you know, cohort, like age groups? Is it, you know, is it stratified that way, you know, by uh, young men, old men? Or are older men considered, you know, uh, not as important uh, kind of? been there, done that, the old dog doesn't know much, or is, or is an older person esteemed and looked at as a wise person. So, you know, you really got to think through some of these things as we, from those of us from the West, go work in some of these other cultures uh, around the world. And so really understanding the role of women and the role of, of kids and, 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 and different, um, and, and different systems of the hierarchy of how um, the culture and and they view their identities as they as they grow into d and go through the different uh, stages of life. Uh, I know in, when we worked in in the culture that we worked with, they actually had a term for when a man became, you know, a a, a distinguished individual. It was around the time that he was in his mid to late forties, and it was a specific term. He wasn't just a man anymore. He was called behetema, which was, you know, one of the one of the more esteemed people, kind of uh, 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 a term of not just salutation like Mr. or Sir, but really um, it had its own classification as as an identity. And so um, understanding how cultures put that together and do that, it can be very effective in your um, intercultural development. Another uh, real, uh, well, three more here I have on this uh, slide to consider about your approach to intercultural development, not only with the racial identity and the, and the ethnic, uh, how people form that, but then also, you know, social context. How are people viewed socially, um, economically? Does that have any effect, you know, with, with status within uh, as, as it pertains to identity and, you know, uh, your ability to work in and understand uh, how to, to effectively work in an intercultural situation. Also history and polit political context, you know, what things have influenced them, what has gotten them to where they are now that influences their worldview and how that they uh, view others around them. What, what sort of things have, have, have uh, played a part in that? You know, what are some of the, the critical and interpretive pieces to that that you may uh, need to consider and, and study and understand so that you have a better understanding of the filter in the grid that that culture is coming from? And this slide here is, um, you know, just why can't we all get along and think through, uh, you know, we have stereotypes in our culture and it is important to realize that other cultures have those as well. Okay. Stereotypes. 
and to understand what those stereotypes are. They have histories of discrimination and socially accepted norms. And they, you know, one of our big areas that, that the people from the West struggle with is a lack of knowledge about the belief system of others. So understanding those things can be very important in helping us to, to work effectively in another culture. Finally, uh, some other factors to uh, affect how we, things that we need to consider in our cultural development, working with other cultures, is um, gender, obviously, roles of men and women, um, ethnicity, how uh, different language groups and different cultures within other countries work with each other, um, and some of the histories behind that and, and understanding those things. and. Um, just avoid local politics as much as you can, um, and, and being on one side or the other will alienate you. Um, just, you know, take a neutral stance on those things for local politics. Um, also understanding the value differences that people have in different cultures. Some, some value relationships more than productivity. And I think in America, it's all about productivity. Uh, and what have you done for me lately versus, you know, uh, time to spend with a friend or a colleague or a family member. Um, and, and for many people, that's a value system, obviously, and there are, you know, these are generalizations, but as a whole, our culture really much values time, time management, things like that, where other cultures, it's about relationships. Um, and then we talked about this a little bit already with Asian cultures, but this is in, in other cultures as well. I think of the uh, Latin American communities are very much more collectivistic societies, more family-oriented um, than, than individualistic. So those things, also consider those as going forward in your intercultural development. Thank you.